Mr. Jim Allister to wind on the debate. Mr. Allister. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Um, I'm grateful to those members who contributed to this debate. Some uh, significant and constructive points were made, uh, and I want to acknowledge that. My starting point with this bill is not to suggest for one minute that it has all the answers, that it's not capable of improvement. I don't think any bill is ever in that category. And I think those members who raised issues about the need to widen the bill to include matters such as the qualifications of a special advisor uh, were making useful uh, points, uh, and uh, some others uh, in the same vein. Uh, it is clear, however, because of a Sinn Féin U-turn and an obvious deal which they have done with the DUP, that the cabal which controls this House has determined today to kill this bill. Um, I say Sinn Féin U-turn because when I was invited to the DFP committee last Wednesday, it was abundantly clear from the contributions made by the Sinn Féin member, Mr. Amulier, at that committee that the, he, he and his party appeared to be in support of the principles of the bill. He did caution that he, he expected that my former colleagues may halt the progress of the bill, and I think he was suggesting there might have been a petition of concern, uh, but they didn't need it. But Sinn Féin has ridden to the rescue, it seems, and has done a deal with the DUP on this. Uh, and despite Mr. O'Mulier, who wasn't here today significantly, perhaps out of the embarrassment of the U-turn that has been done, uh, it was clear from what he was saying there that uh, the bill was likely to meet with his and their support. But be that as it may, it, it, that deal has now become part of the sticking plaster, no doubt, that's been utilised uh, to stick together that which is necessary to cause these institutions to limp along a little bit further until the next crisis. Uh, and uh, it would appear that some arrangement of vested interest has been made in that regard. And of course, it is the vested interest of both parties to protect the very special, unwarranted treatment that the current arrangements provide for their parties. Take Sinn Féin, for example. They tell us that their special advisers don't benefit from the full salary. The full salary is taken, but the balance of whatever is above whatever the current threshold is for Sinn Féin members is donated, it is claimed, to the party. So it's in the interests of Sinn Féin to continue to take from the taxpayer the tens of thousands of pounds that come to the coffers of their party through having a surplus of uh, special advisers and overpaying them up to the level that they are paid. So when Sinn Féin join with the DUP, they are joining in that same vested interest, because those two parties between them now have entitlement to 16 of the 19 special advisers. And in consequence of Sinn Féin's position, of course, as I've said, that means tens of thousands of pounds every year into the coffers of Sinn Féin. The DUP, of course, are in the business of protecting the useful vehicles that special advisers are for reward within the party and for maintaining that golden circle of special advisers 
who, given the quality of some ministers, I suppose are indispensable in terms of running departments. But uh, they are very much in the business of self-interest. And it is that vested self-interest of those two parties that appears today to be going to unite them to go through the no lobby so that they can, can continue the squander at a level wholly out of kilter with expenditure and special advisors anywhere else in the United Kingdom, so that we can continue the squander of having in one department the same number of special advisors as the whole of the Welsh Government has, so that we can continue to make special advisors exempt from discipline such as we scandalously and shamelessly saw in respect of the Red Sky Inquiry, when the appointing minister was able to throw a human shield around the offending special adviser whom independent fact-finding had found should face a disciplinary proceedings, and the minister was able to protect him from that. So well dare anyone, such as in this bill, suggest that though we pay them as civil servants, pension them as civil servants, cosset them as civil servants, that we should dare subject them to the discipline of civil servants, and that we should dare remove from the uh, uh, minister that right to protect his own, as he so shamelessly did in the ca case of Mr. Brimstone. And it is that utterly unashamed defence of the indefensible, in protect of their protection of the vested interests that they have, that the DUP will vote no, and Sinn Féin, as part of some deal with the DUP, will vote no today. Now, of course, Mr. McCartney <laughs> dressed it up in the most threadbare clothes imaginable. He said that Sinn Féin were going to vote against this bill because this bill was an amendment to my last bill, and they were against my last bill, therefore they must be against this bill. Such absolutely illogical nonsense. But that's the point they were driven to in their U-turn from Mr. O'Mullier's position of last week. But this debate did do one thing. It did provoke a DUP contribution, underscoring the vested interest point. Oh yes, this House can debate health, and the DUP sits silent. This House can debate waiting lists, and the DUP sits silent. This House can debate cancer and the DUP sits silent. Let this House debate daring, daring to bring some financial restraint to the squander of special advisers, or dare to curb the number of special advisers, or dare to think that those civil servants should be subject to discipline, and it's business as usual for the DUP back to protecting their own vested interest. That's what we saw today when they sent in uh, an MLA to oppose this bill. Maybe, of course, maybe that was part of the sticking plaster deal with Sinn Féin. Maybe Sinn Féin said, well, if we're going to help you out, if we're going to save your spads, then you're going to have to put a face on it, and we're going to make you break your boycott, and we're going to make you speak in this debate. Maybe that was a little down payment from the DUP to Sinn Féin for whatever else the payoff is. Who knows for the machinations of all of that are all but imponderable. But the plain truth is, 
and let the watching public remember that when this House had the opportunity in a time of austerity, at a time when other pu public servants are expected to tighten their belt, when this House had an opportunity to take the axe to the squander of OFM DFM, having the same number of SPADs as the whole Welsh Government, had the opportunity to take the axe to the, the indefensible position that a SPAD in Northern Ireland costs £106,000 a year and costs 60000 in Wales. The fact that even in a proper government, the Westminster government, they only cost £83,000 a year, but here they cost £106,000 a year. When the watching public asked the question, why was Stormont not prepared to do something about, about it? Let them get the very clear answer that the vested interests of the two parties, Sinn Féin and the DUP, circled the wagons to protect their own. And that is apparently going to be the outcome of this debate. I made mention of the DUP breaking their boycott, returning to business as usual to protect their own. That caused an interesting little exchange on social media. Someone tweeted, DUP couldn't show up for the health debate, but they are on their feet to defend salaries of their spads. And in a moment of forgetfulness, one of their own MLAs retweeted it and favoured it. Mr. Gordon Dunn, until the thought police got to him and he deleted it, retweeted. DUP couldn't show up for health debate, but they're on their feet to defend salaries of their spads. Pity he didn't have the courage of his convictions. And of course, he won't have the courage of his convictions today, because he'll meekly troop through the new lobby to protect the vested interests that uh, are dictating this debate. Mr. Speaker, I do believe this bill was addressing a serious subject in a serious manner, in a measured manner, in a way that it required to be addressed, because we can't go on asking for public credibility if within the confines of this House we demonstrate such gross, appalling irresponsibility that we think that which is preached to others should never apply here and that we should just continue to squander. Why not, the UP and Sinn Féin say, let us continue with all this surplus of special advisers paid for out of the public purse. Why not, they say, continue to overpay them? And why not cocoon them from basic disciplinary proceedings? It is, is as barefaced and shameful a defence of self-interest as anyone will see when those who walk through the new lobby do that shortly. Thank you.